since 1959, Cuba has just been taken over by Fidel Castro. Disney has just released Sleeping Beauty. The Luna 1 was the first spacecraft to leave the world's orbit. And the Swiss decided to vote against giving women the vote. It is also the year that this was made, the Chevrolet Bel Air. It looks absolutely incredible, but at the time it would have had two major downsides, performance and economy. This one though has a little bit of a surprise in the shape of a 6.2 litre LS3 engine, the perfect antidote to an electric conversion. We're gonna take it out, but before that, let's just have a quick look around because I think these are a little bit special. So those of you that follow me might be surprised that I have a sweet spot for these big American land yachts, but I really do. I think they look absolutely spectacular. Now, if we're looking at this one here, there's obviously the abundance of chrome, but it's some of the detailing that really knocks me over. So if we go towards the back of the car here, you can see the whole streamlined design, which is probably terrible for aerodynamics, but it does look very, very, aeronautical inspired even these little bits here going towards the back that are shaped to look like aeroplanes i think it's a stunning looking thing now when they did the update in 1959 it moved to these sort of flattened airline airplane like fins at the back and this being a 60 it doesn't have the almond shaped lights it has the little individual ones which to be honest i much prefer we also have to have a look at the interior because that is another area that is incredibly special about these cars. Now the trim on this one is the Impala trim because you can no longer get the Bel Air trim. And as you can see, it is just absolutely incredible and stunning in here. I mean, just look at, at this. I love that dashboard, the coloring, the shapes. There's nothing quite like it. This one, because it's had the conversion, it's got a few little modern touches. It's got a modern air conditioning system that Rob, who owns it, told me he isn't that fond of. Look at the hooded instruments there. You've got some, I'm pretty sure, some modern uh, inserts into them, but the wheel with a little bit of patina and bubbling. This is a four speed with a lock up overdrive as well. So you get much, much better economy. As standard, these, this would have about 12 miles to the gallon. As it is now on a run, you could get the mid twenties, which is just amazing. It looks like an American diner. It is a fantastic thing. Now, the beauty of doing the conversion with this modern small block Chevy is that you really don't have to modify this car at all. All the mounting points from the new LS3 are the same as the previous small blocks used to be. So Rob, who did the conversion on this, you have to get some different mounts, uh, but that's about it. I really do love these things. I think that they look absolutely spectacular. They're obviously not cars to be driven for the pleasure of getting a sporting sensation, but they definitely have their own benefits. And doing this kind of conversion is absolutely brilliant. Now, if you think about it, you can buy a crate LS3 engine for about £9,000, I think. All in all, if you were to do it yourself, you could probably do a conversion like this for £15,000. If you were to do an electric conversion, you would be looking at, I think, at least 60 to 70,000. And then you might have a car which, for that money, might still not have the range and power that is required. Now, of course, this is still a petrol engine. So for those of us that are absolutely dead set on having a zero emissions vehicle, this wouldn't work. But there are several benefits. You still have the incredible, really apt, American V8 woofly sound to this. As I said, it's a lot cheaper to do the conversion. You still have the power and 
it's far more efficient. So the original cars used to get about 12 miles to the gallon. This on a run is capable of getting 25, even nudging close to 30 miles to the gallon, which makes it really a very usable classic. I would like to have had one of these. The main issue though for me is the size. You need a garage and you need a very big garage. And on little roads like this, size-wise, it's a little bit of a handful. 430, uh, 430 horsepower this has. And is he letting me through? No. And uh, should make for a quick car. Well, let's find out. <laughs> so, there's definitely some power under there. These weighed about 1,600 kilos, which for the time was a lot, but nowadays it's actually fairly sprightly and 430 horsepower is pretty good. If you put your foot down, the gearbox changes down and it's got some pace, but immediately you know that this is a car that you want to treat with some respect on a road like this. So I think on the way back, we'll go on a bigger road and I'll really try and put my foot down because here, there really is, this is a pretty much a standard car. It's got slightly lighter springs at the front because this engine is lighter than the original. Um, but essentially, it's more or less standard and the handling limits are very, very obvious even at lower speeds. Because of the conversion and the room that it has, I think it's slightly wider than the original unit. Rob elected to put on rack and pinion steering. So that improves the steering somewhat, but it is still absolutely incredibly low geared. Um, so for a start, the wheel is massive, but you know, there has to be a lot of movement there for not a lot of movement with those front wheels. And it is incredibly soft. The moment you're going into a corner, it just feels, even at relatively modest speeds, it feels like it wants to plow on. But that is, you know, those aren't criticisms because that is not the way that this should be driven. In terms of the gearing itself on the motor, he's also done that so that it is a good cruiser. So we're now at 55 miles an hour and it's just under 2000 RPM. The engine settles down so that when you're going normally at lower speeds, it's sort of quite loud. But when you're cruising like this, it's pretty quiet. There isn't much wind noise to speak of. I'm really impressed. Of course, the ride is brilliant, but then it would be. In many ways, it feels like a, a Rolls Royce from the 60s or so. It's got the same effortless ride, very light steering. Of course, the engine is different. Brakes require a firm shove, but they feel pretty strong. I'm not sure what upgrades Rob has made to those, if any, but they definitely feel pretty good. You see the under dash panel there is to hide the new air conditioning and all those sort of parts. And I think it doesn't look incongruous. It looks pretty good. Now, despite being massive, the turning circle is pretty terrible. That isn't because of the new rack. Apparently, the turning circle is not very good on these in any case. Now, back in drive, and let's just try and do a spirited bit of acceleration once these cars have gone by. Okay. Way more power than you need. The moment you come up to a corner like this, you want to slow right down and then gently, gently waft through it. Now, I think the gearbox has a couple of settings, Rob was telling me, one which is a little bit more aggressive. I think this is in the softer setting and uh, 
it's odd because sometimes you put your foot down and it changes down, but then just changes back up immediately, which is a little bit disconcerting. As is taking it through the corners, it just doesn't like this. can build up speed quite quickly and then um, you know there's so little left in the chassis in terms of uh, control that you, you can't play about with it too much because you do get some heart in the mouth moments I think more than in any other car that I've been in it really does to like to float about Very slow, very deliberate input, planned well ahead of time. But driven like that, it is an absolute pleasure. You're just sort of wafting around. You have the American V8 in the background. Power is just there whenever you need it. And it's a really interesting conversion, this one, because I have to say, I haven't driven an original, and I'm sure it will sound a little bit different to this, but from the perspective of a US car virgin in many ways this is exactly what I would hope to have but you have much more power you have more reliability better fuel consumption it just seems like a really brilliant package and a great conversion to do now I do wonder I'll see if I can find a picture of the internet to put up now I might not be able to but what the dial faces would have originally looked like I'd say they don't look bad, but the interior is just so splendid that having the more modern gauges for me is not ideal. The reason why they are there is because this gearbox doesn't have a mechanical pickup. So Rob couldn't have used the old dial faces on it anyway. And these produce, these are probably more reliable and more accurate. So I do understand why he did it. But I mean, just look at this, look at this dash. I originally thought this was maybe some kind of plastic dash that had survived, but it's not. It's a metal painted dash. It is all just a work of art. The little eyeball vents there as well. Now, although this isn't a hot rod or anything like that, having this engine, I do want to experience a little bit of a few seconds of full throttle to the floor where there's a little bit more safety and margin of error. So I'm just going to cut now to pulling out onto a main road and just see how it goes down. Gently to begin with. This thing is quick. <laughs> it really is quick. I wasn't able to put my foot to the floor in the same way on that little road. And I think that for me, the main thing which takes away from the confidence, it is the soft suspension, but it's just the steering feel. There is so much vagueness at the straight ahead that it does feel when you have all the power going to the back, unless you're on a really smooth road, it starts to move around, which is a little bit scary. But on a smooth road like this, that was amazing. And it is incredible because it's a bit of an oxymoron, this car, because the chassis, it's not a hot rod. It's supposed to be a fairly faithful recreation. So the chassis really doesn't encourage that kind of naughtiness. But the engine and the power and the torque is so addictive. That engine sounds good as well when it's going up to the higher sort of rev range. Um, it's a lot of fun, this thing, and scary if you don't drive it properly. I don't have anything against electric conversions on many classics. I think there are some that really lend themselves to it. For example, the Citroen DS, which uh, has an engine which I don't think really particularly suits the car. And if it disappears and becomes completely quiet, it will only add to it. Something like this, it's not a sports car, but the American Werble is an intrinsic part of the fun. So for me, this conversion are definitely preferable to anything electric. and. It works extremely well. Thank you so much to Rob for bringing this down. I really appreciate it. He's only just recently finished it. He hasn't done much mileage on it. He's entrusted me with it. 
and it's a beautiful thing and so well restored and converted still has the odd little bit of patina here and there he's reused a lot of the stuff but it looks beautiful if you want me to do a review of one of your cars please get in touch this is the best way um, if you haven't subscribed please do and i really look forward to seeing you for the next video